Ooh. Sun is bright in the evening. But anyway, another story that's fresh on my mind that also to the people that, that you know makes it very evident that they're lying on us but we know that but for the people who are doing it that's why i keep saying you're not a good person you're a piece of shit all right here's more proof to me i don't have it on tape but so anyway one of the jobs i worked maybe about three weeks ago the guy i like to sit on that it's an app i use with the temp service so job pops up and i see what it is i've done it before i know it's basically like literally man i don't take an hour and so it's uh says a uh, description moving helping a driver move what it is it's like uh, a lot of times it might be medical equipment maybe expensive one piece of equipment expensive as a uh, mri imaging machine what are those things like a million and literally, it's on the back of a, with a with size of a U-Haul truck. It's the only piece of equipment in there. You know, usually the guy drives from out of state. You know, wherever you're going, so-and-so's healthcare, you know, whatever. And basically, he could have pushed it by himself. But, I mean, what I mean by push his own wheels is a machine. And it's literally the only thing. You pull up to the dock. I helped, but I did, you know, it did take two of us to guide it without it crashing into a door or a wall. So... But so I guess since it's such an expensive piece of equipment, uh, you know, they, they just rather go ahead and pay the little sixty seven dollars even though you only work like 30 minutes, you know, to, the, to us in the company. And um, so when I see those, yeah, I pick it. But for somebody who's doing this like full time at this company, that's not a good, really a good thing. I mean, you know... You got to find something that's going to pay more, more hours, you know. But for me, or uh, some of the other guys, yeah, that's, that's perfect. Oh, that pops up. Yeah, but anyway, long story short. So I get there. The driver, again, starts off automatically. I spot him because uh, I, I got there. I guess I was the first one I got there before the driver. And I asked, you know, one of the receptionists, was that the right building? She said, no, you got to, you know, walk around the corner. So, okay, I see him pulling up and it has the name of the company on the side of the truck. And I see him backing out. And clearly I know why. I know you can say this if you're not familiar. It's because he was pointing his truck to, to the direction where I parked. Like I said, I got there first. So I already know they, I guess, calling him on the phone, you know, the gang stalker shit. And I see him having to back out and turn his truck like basically if he turned right here he, he was going to the right but he would have had to come back this way so he's backing up like right here just so he can go this way and i see him and i walk out there and stop him so I wave at him finally he looks at me i know he knows he can say whatever about paranoia but anyway he yeah he knows who i am so uh he rolls down when I said, oh, okay, um, I'm here from such and such company. He said, oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's a younger guy. Look like he's maybe 29, 30. And he had he does this. The other guy, he's uh, already here too, and he's over where I parked. He wasn't there before, but he's there. He's in the car. He has on a shirt like I have, and there's a reason I'll explain. And, he, you know, he grabs his collar, and he now didn't respond like, okay, but he looks at it and he gives me a look, you know, like a, a – the gang stalker look like he's looking obviously this is something important and he wants to see my response and i guess he didn't get it and he says it again and and it's a lime green shirt it uh okay i really didn't think much of it. he just says a shirt like i have so i'm thinking they work together so anyway i got over there to the car because he's going to park where the uh the deck where we loaded so I go get the other guy, and uh, yeah, he has a lime green shirt. And so I asked him, I do y'all work? He said, no, I work with you at the record company. So both of these guys just happen to wear a lime green shirt. I tell you where this is going. I did sign up to be a lime charger, but I haven't done any. Went and picked any up, and, they, you know, they've been texting me. Um, but anyway, to them, it's like, 
Um, you know, this whole work thing, I don't, I, like I said, because of my check, they, you know, to them, like I said, the jealousy. This, this is where this whole thing is going. It's not me bragging or whatever. The jealousy and the irony of the gang stalkers, you know, because like I said, they, the, the whole purpose is to make us destitute. Or to make us do something stupid to someone else or to somebody. So either we're in jail or, you know, a psych ward or hurt yourself, the ultimate, or either hurt yourself to where you're in a hospital, you know. But so they're really upset. They're very salty, as they say nowadays, because, like I said, I don't have to work. I really don't have to another day, work another day and my car is paid for. Or, you know, it's not I live in an apartment, but uh, yeah, definitely I can afford to go buy a house instead of paying rent. I could buy a mortgage. I wanted to, but I don't want to. I'd like to be able to call the maintenance man instead of having to call a plumber or whatever. So anyway, long story short, the guy, you know, so he, he gives me code words, you know, that lets me know he used to be in the military also. Because when we, the, it's a heavy piece of equipment, this is copy machines. We're moving, delivering some new ones and moving out a big old one. And so he, he you know, I can tell this is pre-scripted. He said, I'm not going to put you in harm's way. Because basically we're coming down some steps and it's three of us. And he wanted one of us to be basically down the step and like guiding it and them two holding it which i did and i'm doing because first of all i wasn't worried like i told them you know i wasn't being smart like man i don't give a damn about this equipment trust me i'm getting out the way i'm not going to try to stop if y'all grip start letting loose i'm getting out of the way I don't care if this shit falls and breaks all of the sheet rock, you know, coming down steps. You know, I'm not finna rip for this shit. Tim said, I don't care if this was my permanent job, making $19, 20 $30 an hour. I'm still not risking my life over this piece of any of it. Nobody should, should be doing that. So anyway, he that kills all that. I'm like, but uh, yeah, when he said, I, I, that's basically military talk. I wouldn't put you in harm. You know, he says that. He looks at me. I'm, you know, I didn't even pay no attention. I'm like, okay. But he's younger than me anyway. So finally, as we're getting all the stuff together, putting it on his truck, I made a joke about where I used to be stationed at. So this is where I'm going about the lies and them not. Every time, like when I say about check my record, my past, before you start sending it like these little boys after me. You don't fucking know me. I mean, you, you, um, this is not some gangster stuff where it's, you don't know me. You don't know me. You know, like the little 13-year-old on Moy Provich, you know, that that's a, a delinquent, you know, having sex. I'm 13, I have sex or whatever I want, you know. No, man, and that's a fact. You don't know what neighbor I come up before I joined the military. You don't. It, it's, it was different back then, man. Y'all kids don't understand, right? Stop, and not just that, the adults, people my age. I know y'all watched all these movies and y'all, you know, you watch the women, y'all watch all this Housewives of Atlanta and, you know, y'all, yeah, you might have fucked a lot of thugs, but you're not the thug, all right? So, you know, the sweet, the, the smart mouth and sassy attitude and, you know, when you do that and you're a gang stalker, like I said, they come up, I come up, where I'm going with this is by, you know, like I said, a lot of times I'll go to buy something and, you know, they got an attitude already. And like I said, what I don't do, I don't get back attitude with you. You know, I fuck you up at work, and you, usually a lot of people, oh, that's foul. Nah, that's when it's a, you actually don't know the person, and they might have actually did something that you could go to the supervisor with, but you know, now they, oh, don't do that. You don't get them in trouble. Da, da, da. But no, you're a gang stalker. You're a murderer. You're a fucking murderer. That's not just you giving bad customer service or a sassy attitude. You did that. You know, you're, you're a terrorist. So, I'm going to get you however I can. Since y'all too cowardly to say what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? If you want, if you want, if you believe in what you're doing, then say what you're doing. Don't sit there and act like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't, what, what, you must be crazy. You know, didn't want to make jokes about it. So, anyway, long story short, after I made the joke about where I used to be stationed, something we was doing, I can't exactly remember. I just made a joke about, you know, I haven't done this, yeah, that, yeah, since I stationed, you know, this and that, and, you know, he gets his look in his eye, almost like a disappointment, and, and basically, like, I wouldn't say jealous, but like a little bit of impressed, like, oh, you were airborne? And, you know, I get to look like, what? Yeah, man, it's not a, 
you know, it, and uh, that, that, so again, that shows that he knows why he's there because he's also military. He's also was hurt. He got out the same way I did. Not injuries aren't the same. That's where I'm going to go with. If you listen to the rest of the story, how I, I, I even though I know who he is, I tried to help him. Um, like I said, that's why I be telling all of them. If you're not in the military, I'm trying to help you as best I can. I'm not finna, you know. This they they got them. That's what I'm saying about the lies. They got these young kids. All this, even other military veterans. That this is like a competition or or this secret code word you give them. I told them to give me money or percentage. So he tells me. Uh, but like I said, that tells me. You know, he, he like he didn't he didn't know that, and, and so then now he and they're like so what does that mean? What's the big deal? I mean, maybe not to a lot of people, it's not a big deal, but I never thought it really was. But when I was in, you know, that's the reason they have problems getting people to be paratroopers. People in the army don't want to, you know, jump out of airplanes, and and uh, so I don't know if he wanted to, but anyway, but when he you could tell him looking his face, he didn't know it. So like I said, they don't, and that to me, that is, you're like, that's not a lie. Just cause, yeah, you admitted the truth. You had to know that if you're the gang stalker handing out assignments, you fucking know my past pitch. So why don't you, like I'm saying, that's what I'm telling y'all people. They don't properly brief y'all on who you fucking with. So anyway, you know, we still just kicking the bobo, talking shit as we loading the, the old copy machines, a bunch of them that they, he was taking away. So anyway, he finally, he gives me what happened to him, how he got hurt while he was in. And the thing he said after, you know, he explains that the long the reason I'm still telling it is because that doesn't happen. He basically, he was getting punished. Him and his, I guess his squad, I don't know if it was Hope to him by the Sergeant Major in his in career, right? And then I'm like, damn, yeah. Then it hit me. I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't happen to people in permanent party. Permanent party, long story short, anything, basically after you're done training, AIT, all that stuff, basic jump school, whatever. And it's like, not even if you, you're, you've you been there, maybe they might fuck you a little bit the first couple of months, week, you know, maybe maybe make you do push-ups like you're still in basic. But what he explained you know like run from here to here and it was a hill on the incline run down this hill and all the guys whatever i'm like damn what, what the hell that i'm like that doesn't that hasn't happened to me since like ait you know you, you do years and that, that never happens no more not like that you get in trouble you might they might make you do some push-ups if if you only you know if you're still brand new you're private other than that, you getting counseling, you know, whatever. If it's that bad, you getting you gonna lose rank. Yeah, Article 15. You know, even worse, court martial. You know, even worse, prison. <laughs> but you're not getting no whatever the fuck he was talking. And it's not just my opinion. I'm like, I don't know nobody who said anything like that about their unit, their regular unit. Like I know guys at different units, and it's when I was in, and when I, you know, moved somewhere else, to re -enlist, whatever. And there's nobody talking about, yeah, but they, you know, they made us do this. And I'm like, wait a minute, what that, that doesn't happen. But anyway, he said he hurt himself, and that's the main reason. Because matter of fact, it was another job. I um, had this school, another guy, another young white guy, beginning of this year. He said, oh, and I knew again. Um. But it wasn't just him being a gang stalker, but I did wear a, a sweater, sweatshirt with my old unit, you know, 82nd Airborne Division on it. And it uh, it wasn't some official, something I bought off, you know, just something you could buy. So anyway, he comes over the second day and said something about, oh, I'm, I'm, I used to be in the military. So I know he saw it because it, it, it's really big. It, the, the, the logo is really big. And... He he was resupplying us, so he I know he saw it today. So I'm like, why didn't you just say something like, "Hey man, I used to be in the army too." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you are. Yeah, hey, you was. In, I, I mean, that I, fine. That's fine. That's cool. But no, don't come over. So he goes, like I said, with the gang stalking competition. 
that says something about what they were doing, and that's wrong. You know, you're overexerting. You go, oh, I'm used to being in the military. We're trained to take it. And I said, no, no, that's not right. Seriously, I told him too fast. I said, that's not right. You, you're a fucking idiot. I'm like, I, I was stationed at 82nd, bro. That no, you, you, if you were in charge of pushing them boys like that, you're going to get in trouble and lose your position because you going to force them to do something stupid in training, and now they're out. Somebody's hurting out for six weeks sitting on a profile because you're stupid ass trying to play fucking tough. I said, no, it doesn't work like that. That's bullshit. Don't even come at me with that. You know, like, uh, oh, we, he was like, oh, I, I sprained my ankle once. Yeah, that's what he said. And I, I, we was on the ruck march. I'm like, I did play on two, but never hurt myself. But uh, um, after jumping out of the plane, still had to do, you know, whatever, how many ruck miles. So, so I'm like, no, that doesn't go like that. Hell, if I saw you do that, do that shit to you and your your squad like that, I'd call you out. You know, if the, if you one of your squad members hurt his ankle, he and you could tell somebody hurt their fucking ankle, they not uh, dogging it, faking it, and you still trying yelling at him, trying to make him run or do whatever. That, no, that's bullshit. Ain't no to get through the pain and now now he's fucked up permanently. No stupid ass. So that's what I said. Is this shit? The, 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 that's why I call these stupid motherfuckers dangerous. Even people that should know better. That's what how the powerful grip that they 